What up, people of God? You doing well? You wild, crazy, weirdo, supernaturalists, filled with God's presence, radiating the very glory of God. Just, just think that, that for people around you, there are side effects that people experience just from being around you. You, you should probably have like a warning sign that you, that you wear. Don't get too close. There will be consequences. <laughs> positive consequences. How many of you ever hung out with somebody and there wasn't so positive consequences from it? How many of you know that, that, that for the disciples that hung out with Jesus, there was consequences? How many of you know that Jesus rubbed off on them? Yep, yep, yep. What we're doing, if, if you're new here tonight, what we're doing is we're, we're studying um, the men and women that God has used over church history to bring heaven to earth. And what we're actually looking at, we're looking at the 12 disciples, okay, that would become known as the 12 apostles or sent ones, the 12 missionaries that were scattered out from a great revival or infilling of God, the Holy Spirit himself, okay, and then through a great persecution, they were scattered um, throughout the nations where they began running with the fire of God. They began running with boldness and passion. They were casting out demons, okay? They were raising the dead. They were doing miracles. They were tearing down literal idols, okay? Um, and they were seeing uh, uh, city, uh, city um, uh, conversions, whole cities getting, getting converted. In fact, did you know um, that, 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 that after, you know, for the first 300 years, uh, after uh, the death burial and resurrection of Christ if you lived in a city most likely you would identify as a Christian in these major cities you know surrounding Jerusalem where these apostles would go in fact the word heathen comes from people that lived outside the cities so the word heathen means those that lived on, on the heath okay the, the farmers okay um, the word pagan refers to those who did not live in the cities, okay? And so this is, this is fascinating, looking at a move of God that turns into a major missionary expansion. In fact, you could say that any true, radical, okay, move of God, I would say any true revival bears with it a corresponding missions move. Why? Because if you look at every encounter in the Bible with the living God, it always ends with one word. Go. Now go. I mean, all the way, you go back to even the prophet Isaiah, who, by the way, has a pretty incredible visitation pretty incredible i saw the lord high in the his train fills the tent you know he saw the lord he saw him in his mat i mean absolutely incredible he has this encounter and, and the lord says i want you to be a mouthpiece i want you to be an oracle of salvation to your generation and, and and isaiah says woe is me i'm a man of, of unclean lips and, and the lord takes the coal and, and he cleanses uh his lips and then what does he say now go yeah, that every encounter with God will lead, to, that any sort of radical move of the Spirit will always lead to one word. Now go. Go. Take this encounter. Take this visit. visit take, take this revelation and take it, take it out and share it with everyone you know. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. Guys, um, we are looking at the 12 apostles, these 12 on fire sent ones. And then we're going to shift things up a little bit, okay? And we're going to look at 12 of these radical mystics that forsook everything to move out into the wilderness. They were known as the Desert Fathers. And we're going to look at 12 Desert Fathers and mystics that the Lord used 
to bring heaven to earth in a radical, unprecedented, re- religious, box-shattering, I mean, some of the stories will blow your mind. It's, it's so much fun. It is so much fun. And then we're going to fast forward, okay? And we're going to look at 12 of God's generals that the Lord used in the late 1800s, early 1900s to restore, okay, the healing gifts back to the church. We're going to look at John Alexander Dowie, okay, a man who was so touched and moved by God, a man that so wanted to see the kingdom of God on the earth that he started a literal city called Zion, where a man by the name of John G. Lake would go in order to get an impartation for healing. By the way, he got an impartation for So we'll study also John G. Lake. We'll study Spokane, Washington. We'll study the great healing rooms movement that, that took place. We'll look at Catherine Coleman. We'll look at Amy Simple McPherson. I've been to both of their graves, by the way. And Catherine Coleman's grave is something. It's, it's, locked, uh, it's in a secured locked garden. You have to have a key to get into it. And um, uh, so I climbed the fence. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know, I know somebody with a key. It, it, we went, man, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big, you know, grave guy, okay? I'm a living Christ guy. But, but I went, and I, I am telling you, you could feel the peace of God on, uh, on Captain Coleman's grave. It was absolutely incredible. Um, so we'll be looking at, at that. We'll be looking at Mariah Woodworth Eder, a woman who would begin preaching and the glory of God would come and she would get frozen and begin to trance out in a heavenly realm. And people would come just to see the frozen woman who would go without food and water, go without even going to the bathroom. And a fro- Whoa, I know. That's how you know. If that happened to Pastor Darren, that's how you know it was God. He went longer than 60 minutes without going to the, right? All right, all right, good time. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. That's going to be incredible. And then we're going to fast forward. We're going to look at 12 modern day living supernaturals. And as they said, you got to get here to Declaration Con. This, I promise you, there will not be a boring night of that con. You're going to want to be here um, for, that, for that conference. It is going to be, it's going to be next level, okay? And let's pray for the night of prayer on Friday night. Um, uh, we're being told that the mayor of Seattle is supposed to be here on, on, on Friday night. The new mayor in Seattle is a, is a, is a moderate uh, Democrat who, um, who prays with the pastors when they gather downtown. This is a huge, huge, huge answer to prayer. This new, this new mayor. I'm telling you, it, it, no, it's a... You know, it's such a huge, you know it's an answer to prayer when somebody tells you what God's doing and you don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? And so let's, they, they have him on the schedule, okay? Let's pray that nothing comes up. Let's pray that that, that happens. Because there's, there's something very significant, there'll be something very significant about having, uh, the, and, you know, the mayor here. And even, it, let's, let's say for some reason it doesn't, that it doesn't happen. Let's just believe that we will see this new mayor of Seattle come to the east side, the Seattle Revival Center. He needs to know that there's an army of churches that surround the city of Seattle that are contending and praying for the glory of God, for, for God to come and to sit down on that city. You know, all right? He needs to know that there's an army of people that are praying for him. So also, let's be praying for the, the, mayor, the mayor as well. Guys, tonight we're, we've got a lot of work to do. So, um, so no dilly-dallying, okay? No getting sidetracked. I'm going to need you guys to really focus tonight, okay? I know how you guys get. Um, we're going to be looking at, guys, three apostles, okay? You might say, how are you going to really cover three apostles? Look, we did it last week, so, all right? So, testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. If we did it last week, we can do it this week, okay? This will be the last time that we cover, that we cover three, um, but this will be, be good. We're looking at um, Thomas, okay? Um, we're also looking at uh, James, and we're also looking at uh, Simon. So, okay, we're looking at what some would refer to as uh, doubting Thomas. Okay, it's not very nice. It's not actually true. Um, how would you like to have the nickname, uh, you know, uh, Darren, the dude that didn't have any faith? Gosh, thanks. You know, doubting, you know, doubting Thomas. Oh, you know the apostle that never had any faith? Okay, by the way, that's, that's not even who he was. That wasn't even his nickname then. Nobody called, by the way, nobody called him doubting Thomas. And when you get to heaven or when the great cloud of witnesses visits you, hey, 
Please don't call him Doubting Thomas. I don't think, I don't think he'll take likely to that. Because he wasn't a doubter, okay? He was, he was an incredible man of faith. We'll, we'll be looking. He did have a nickname, by the way. And his nickname was um, The Twin, oddly enough. Uh, I love all, all, the, all the disciples had these nicknames, okay? Jesus even had his own nicknames for some of them. The only Jesus used, you know? Like Peter, Peter for example, Cephas. Only Jesus referred to him by that, by that, by that name. Which is, which is, you know, you're my rock, Peter, which is pretty awesome. Um, and they were also going to be looking at Simon the Zealot, okay? So that was actually, they referred to him by his nickname, the Zealot, which is, which is interesting. And so that's how they would s- tell the difference between Peter and Simon, okay? Um, is uh, they'd call him the, the Zealot, which is fun. So these are the, the apostles that we're go- going to be looking at, um, beginning with the, uh, with the apostle Thomas, Yep, his nickname was the twin. Why? No idea, okay? But even as you look at the various scriptures, you'll see him referred to as the twin. And the disciple, known as uh, the twin, or uh, uh, Didymus, okay, um, means the, the twin. And it could have been, some people say that, that maybe he looked just like Jesus. Um, uh, uh, there is even some Gnostic gospels that, that are just straight up heresy that basically say that he, that he was, you know, a, a Gnosticism was the denial of the personhood and the humanity of Jesus and that Jesus came purely as a spirit who did not actually die. It, it, gets, it, get, it gets crazy. Um, Paul addresses it throughout his, his, his epistle, you know, um, and so we don't subscribe to that. So we don't really know why. Why is he called the twin? We don't really know why. But we do know that Thomas is mentioned in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. He's also mentioned um, in Acts. Thomas is referred to as one of the 12. Um, uh, 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 the Gospel of John actually says the most about Thomas and his larger role in history. The term doubting Thomas was given to him um, from the story that I love so, so, so much. It's out of John chapter 20, verses 24 uh, to 29. Now, Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin, okay, was not with them when Jesus came. So they all got to experience Jesus, but Thomas wasn't with them. And the other disciples told them, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see his hands Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side where they stabbed him with a spear, I will never believe. You say this is true? If this is true, praise God. But until I actually get to put my finger into his hand, until I actually get to put my finger into his side. Perhaps this is a reason to come up with a nickname, Doubting Thomas. Perhaps this is a reason to respect this guy. This is great. I'm hearing about this, but I want to experience the Christ. I want to encounter his wounds. I think this is a reason to honor Thomas, not to say, oh, where was his faith? No, no, no. He said, if he's alive, I will see him with my own eyes. I will fill his wounds. I will encounter him. I hope that every person here is like this. It's not enough just for me to read about the Christ in his word. I read his word because it opens up a realm where I can encounter the Christ. Jesus the Christ wants to encounter you. All right, good times. I'm glad we established that. Verse 26, eight days later, that was some time. Jesus is alive. He's hanging out. Thomas is like, I want to encounter him. One day later, nothing. Well, two days later, nothing. Three days later, okay. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Yo, guys, <laughs> what up? The doors were locked. They're hiding out. They're, 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 they're a little scared. This is a crazy time. And all of a sudden, 
all the guys realize there's one extra man in the room. Isn't this awesome? Okay. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, I want to do this. I just want to show up you know, somewhere and be like, what's up? What's up? You know, this, uh, this says, he, says, um, he says, what's up? He says, peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, look at it. Put your finger. He appears there in the room supernaturally. And then he looks right at Thomas. He knows. He knew. He says to Thomas, see that? Put your finger right here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, Thomas. Believe. Ah! Yeah. And Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Isn't this awesome? Hey, what what do you tell people when, uh, when they say that Jesus wasn't God? That Jesus was just the Son of God, but Jesus wasn't God. You tell them, what about Thomas? What about Thomas in John chapter 20, where he says, he responds, my God, I believe it. You're, you're not just my rabbi. You are my Lord. You are my master. You are my God. What does Thomas do? He responds with praise. He responds with worship. Yeah. Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Awesome. Thomas sets up Jesus for the memorable John 14, verses 5 and 6. This is where Jesus is talking about, hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you, okay? I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. It's going to be amazing. In my Father's house are many, many rooms. And Thomas says, all right, show us the way. Let's go. I'm ready for a new house. Come on. Let's go to the mansion, right? Come on. Show us the way. How do we know where you're going? How do we know the way? Jesus responds to him. Okay, John 14. I am the way, Thomas. Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Okay, this is what Jesus says to Thomas. No one. Everyone say no one. No one. Say it again. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen now, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not all ways lead to the Father, okay? Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He is your, the only high priest that you need is, you don't need Darren to be saved. You don't need Seattle Revival Center to be saved. You don't need any other middle man. You just need Jesus. The, the purpose, my job, okay, the reason why I get paid is to say just enough that Holy Spirit would reveal Jesus so that Jesus can reveal the Father, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, he is the way, the truth, the life, that our role as believers is to point people to Jesus. How do we know the way? That everybody's wondering, what's the way? Everybody's wondering, what's the way? There's got to be some way to get to where my, my, where, where my, uh, my spirit, the record of eternity, is saying, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. There's more, there's more, there's more. People that aren't saved, there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more. People that are saved, there's more, there's more. You and I here tonight, I know there's more. Show us the way. Show us the way to the more. Show us the way to the more. Okay, here's the way. You need to start lighting candles when you pray. No. Hey, you want to light candles when you pray? Cool. Light some candles and have a little sandbox, you know, you know, do, do you have your little, th- have your praise flags, but hey, hit your tambour. Listen, 
that's all awesome, okay? But our props are not the way. Our props are fun. It's fun to sit out in nature and just to enjoy the presence of the Lord. But nature is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Hindu is not, Hinduism is not the way. Meditation, okay, um, outside of Christ Jesus is not, the incense is not the, the, the way. Going to some mystic garden, laying on a grave, <laughs> it is not the way, okay? It is not the way. There's only one way, and that is Jesus, and he has made himself fully available to you. Say, I want mystic encounters with Christ Jesus. Okay, you engage Christ Jesus. How, how do you do that? You just say at night before you go to bed, Jesus, I want you. I want to eat your flesh. I want to drink your blood. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your heart. I want to know your glory. I want to engage you, Christ Jesus. And when you wake up in the morning, you say, I know by faith. I might not feel it because it's Monday morning, but I engage by faith. I engage by faith. Not by feelings and not by sight. I know it's Monday morning, but I declare the delight of heaven and bliss is all around me. I declare Eden is in my heart. I declare I am a temple and a habitat for God. I declare he is seated on the throne inside of my heart. I will be led by Christ. I will be led by the spirit of the Lord. I will release the... And then you go to work and you're driving in your car and you just declare that the angel of God is sitting um, beside me, <laughs> you, get, you get the idea. You have permission to engage Jesus. Thomas said, show us the way. He said, I'm it. Engage me. I'll introduce you to Father. Yeah. You good? All right, you look good. You look good. You look good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We see uh, Thomas... Yeah, he's not doubting Thomas. He's Thomas the Brave. When Jesus heads to Judea in John chapter 11, there's all these Jews that want to kill Jesus. And what does Thomas say to all the other disciples? Hey, Master is going to a place where everybody wants to kill him. Let's go with him so that we'll all die together. Does that sound like a coward to you? Does that sound like someone that doesn't, well, <laughs> you know? No, no, it's Thomas the Brave. Hey, Jesus is on his way to go get, okay, go get his butt kicked. Let's go with him. We'll all get our butts kicked together. That's what I told Charlie when we went into CHOP. Thomas, he's, he's also one of the first six apostles. Um, when Jesus, okay, um, after the, uh, his death and resurrection, Jesus comes and visits six apostles. And Thomas is, is one of the six. Jesus in his glorified body comes and helps them catch some fish. And then Jesus says, me and my glorified body am hungry. What does that tell you? That the same body that Jesus took to heaven is a body that's capable of eating fish. What does that mean? Yep, you guessed it. In heaven, there's going to be a lot of eating. We, you will eat and drink with Christ Jesus. There will be a banqueting table, and his banner over you is going to be love. Yep, 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 yep. According to tradition, Thomas takes the gospel to India, and it's in India where he is martyred. This is fascinating. Thomas said he would believe if he got to put his finger, okay, in the wound of Christ, including his hands and his side. And it's interesting because according to church, to church history, um, that the way that Thomas was martyred was with a spear um, in his side. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful painting. Um, and it is a telling of the... Um, the martyrdom of Thomas. If you, if you look at the picture, um, this would have taken place in India. Okay? It's fascinating. Um, we have families here that are part of the church from India. Their last name is Thomas. Why? Because they're, part of, they're from the places in India 
where it's believed that Thomas brought the gospel of Jesus Christ. And upon their conversion, they take the last name, uh, they take the first name of the apostle as their last name, which is why Thomas is a common name in India from people that have converted and they're from the place where the apostle Thomas preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here in this painting, you'll see that in his right arm, he's holding on to a stone cross. It's believed that he established a stone cross on foreign soil in India. So it has him holding on with his right, with his right hand onto the stone cross that's been established on foreign soil. Coming up on uh, the left-hand side of the painting, you'll see two palm trees. Now, the first palm tree, you can't actually see what's at the top of it, but there's this huge batch of seed uh, 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 th that's on the first palm tree. And on the second palm tree, there are these coconuts, these really the, the very large uh, coconuts. Tim, I don't know if on the, cam the camera you can pan up to show the people on, online those really big coconuts. <laughs> um, symbolic of these trees of life that are growing from the, from the ground because of this great mission of Thomas. You'll see um, he's uh, uh, on the, uh, if we could see the bottom of this painting, this painting is cropped. Um, he has bare feet. He's wearing kind of a monkish robe. His hair is uncombed uh, and wild. He uh, has a dagger that would come into his neck. So he would have a dagger pierce his neck uh, and a spear that would go in his side. Looking up to heaven, he sees the cherubim. He sees the angels coming down. And in their hands is a wreath of glory that they're coming down to place on his head. If you look in the background there, um, we see a, an idol, okay? It's got the feet of a creature. It goes up into the body of a man. Um, it's got the, the head of, of perhaps a, a goat. Um, so we've got this hybrid idol. Um, this idol, and you can see it's on the pillar right in the center of the painting. Um, this idol was a major stronghold, a major idol in India. Um, it, is, it, is, it is written uh, it, according to the martyrdom of of Thomas, that just before his execution, that idol crumbled to the ground and was destroyed just prior to his, his, his execution. Um, he also, we see this, this very gorgeous, um, very uh, European church there in the background. Um, uh, Thomas is known for establishing temples and places of encounter for people to come to study Jesus, learn about Jesus, and encounter Jesus. It's also um, legends, and we don't know if this is necessarily true, but some of these temples were, were quite large. In fact, there's one temple that was dedicated to Jesus that was so large that even the elephants couldn't get the, the large columns up uh, into the right place. And it said that Thomas, filled with the Holy Spirit, had such supernatural strength that he was able to lift these columns up and to put them in place and that he lifted them up without exerting any sort of force. This is Thomas the sent one, not doubting Thomas. Thomas the brave, Thomas the twin, whatever that means, who God, filled with his spirit, sent him to India as well as China to bring forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. Next, we're going to look at uh, James, the son of uh, Alphaeus, or Alphaeus. Uh, and he's one of the more obscure uh, apostles, okay? Um, he's obscure. Uh, Simon the Zealot is going to be even more obscure, okay? Um, now, there's a lot of James, and we talked about this before. There was uh, James the Greater, James the Lesser, and James the son of Zebedee. So we studied James the son of Zebedee already um, as part of this series. When we look at the Apostle James, the son of Alphaeus, um, it is believed that he was the brother of Jesus who wrote the book of James. We are not 100% sure this is somewhat confusing. Even first, second, third century scholars would get these various James uh, confused. So for tonight, as we study this, based off of the various 
sources and resources I was looking at, it appears as though most people believe that James, the son of Alphaeus, was James the Lesser, or otherwise known as James the Just. Listen, if I was this James, I'd rather be known as James the Just instead of James the Little One, the Lesser. And so this will be the approach that we take tonight. In Galatians chapter 2, we see a recounting of the second visit of Paul to Jerusalem. When Paul is in Jerusalem, he engages what is known as the Council of Jerusalem. They are going to have a discussion on whether or not Gentile believers would have to follow the laws of Moses. In Acts... Paul declares that it was actually James, believed to be James the Lesser, James the brother of Jesus, that presided over this council. Paul describes James as a pillar in the church, along with Peter and John. This is what it says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. James, Cephas, Peter, so James, Peter, and John, these esteemed as pillars gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, which is better than the right foot of fellowship, right? They gave us the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. And they agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. We know that James didn't always believe. Mark 3.21 tells us that um, the siblings of Jesus thought that Jesus was actually out of his mind. In the Gospel of John chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, it tells us that Jesus' brothers mocked him. Why? Because they didn't believe in him. Okay? Which makes, which makes sense. Can you imagine if your brother was like, I am God. No, you're not. No, you're not. I know mom likes you the best, but you're not God. You're not even the son of God. You're, you're just Jesus. Okay. It says that they, they mocked him and, and they didn't believe in him. And while these verses don't explicitly name um, James, it's very possible that he was included in these uh, stories. We also know that it was after the resurrection of Jesus that James recognized that Jesus truly was uh, the son of God. God. In 1 Corinthians 15, 7, in defending the resurrection of the dead to the church of Corinth, Paul quotes an early Christian tradition that he received from others. The creed mentions the resurrection appearance, including James. And this would, change, uh, this would explain a lot about uh, the tone of James. As James, one who was not always a believer. James that was not always a follower. James that came along a little further on in life. If we look at James, James the just, the brother of Jesus, church tradition would tell us that the way that he died was that he was pushed from the, from the pinnacle, the high, the high point of the temple. Uh, he was At the pinnacle of the temple, what was he doing there? He was preaching to a crowd of people. He was telling them about who Jesus was, about what Jesus did. Telling them about this good news of the kingdom. And while he was preaching, um, it is believed that the same hostile Jewish community that Saul was a part of, Saul who would be, later be known as Paul, who had such violent aggression towards the good news of Jesus, that there in the same place where Jesus faced the very ones who would crucify him, it is believed that his brother, preaching the gospel in Jerusalem, was pushed from the temple upon hitting the ground that is said that he was beaten with a club and stoned to death. When you see the various um, 
paintings of James. It's not uncommon to see James oftentimes holding a, 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 a club. James was killed in Jerusalem. And what's really cool about James is the significance, the similarity between Saul, who would have this incredible encounter with the voice of God himself. Saul, why are you persecuting me? And this incredible turnaround moment. Okay. And the similarity to James, who at first wasn't quite sure, who at first didn't quite believe, and then became a mighty pillar in the church of Jerusalem. James the just. Let's just go with that instead of James the lesser. And then there is Simon. Simon the zealot. Since the apostle Simon is only listed among the apostles, we hardly don't know anything about this guy. He doesn't have a book, and nobody really talks about it. He's listed in the various lists as one of the 12. He's listed as Simon the Zealot in the book of Acts. This is really all that we know about him, that there was a very militant, very hostile. They were like this group of, it was like the Jewish Antifa, okay? <laughs> yeah, Antifa, the Antifa, they're just like, we're going, we're going to overthrow all forms of natural government. Like, like the zealots. All right, there was the Sadducees, okay? There was the Pharisees, okay? There was the Essenes. And then there was this group. They were, they, were, they were known as the zealots. And they were actually responsible for the first Jewish-Roman war. Because here is this religious group, okay? And their whole thing, all their church services, all their conferences, everything was Messiah is coming, okay? Messiah is coming. And when he comes, we are going to gather our arms. We're going to gather our ammunition. We're going to get all our AK-47s. And we are going to kick the Romans' butts. In fact, whenever you read this, the story of Jesus and he's preaching, the, 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 the zealots would always show up. They'd always be like, Master, is it almost time for us to get our AKs? And, and this, it, we, we, we don't really know hardly anything about, about Simon, except for that it's, it's believed that Simon could have been a part of the Jewish Antifa. You know, he could have been a part of, like, like whenever, whenever there was, you know, it's, this would be a great opportunity for a riot. You know, like, 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 this would be a great opportunity to go and break stuff. Like, Simon was crazy, crazy, passionate. He is, and even, even after he was following Jesus, that Simon was the one that they're always like, bro, cool your zeal, right? Like, like, bro, Simon, simmer down now, right? Like, like, Simon's Simon like, maybe now, maybe now's the time that we, that we should go kill some Romans. Yeah. And Jesus is like, no, that's, that, that's not, that's not my, that's not my, that's not my style. In fact, isn't it interesting that Jesus, he has to say these certain things. Like, like when somebody strikes your cheek, turn your cheek and give them the other, like, give them the other one. Like, Jesus is always bringing this teaching of, hey, the typical way that you guys go about, the way that you think that I am going to establish my kingdom, that's not how my kingdom operates. Yeah. Hey, why is this really, really important? Because if you're part of SRC, and if you love me, and some of you are still trying to figure it out if you do, um, but we are a passionate community. Here at SRC, we are a zealous 
community. Here at SRC, we want to see the kingdom of God established in our country. And we want to see things that are, that are gross, that are defiling. We want to see things that are an abomination. We want to see these things change within our country, right? But with that being said, it is so important that we don't turn the temple into a Trump rally. There is a difference between the kingdom of God, okay, and being a radical right-wing Republican. Yep. And what you had was Simon, okay, and Simon was the guy that was wearing the MAGA hat, okay. Simon was the guy, he, he was the red hat guy, that, and hey, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not, so, but, but, uh, <laughs> but here we have this, this idea of, this is the way that we're going to take our country back. And this is what Jesus said. No, that's not the way. I am the way. And I have a way that we're going to do it. But it's not going to be through militant force. It's going to be by releasing the love of my Father. It's going to be in walking in and releasing the love of God. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. There's a very militant Jesus that will one day return. He'll come back to judge nations. Okay, but last I looked, you're not on a white horse and you don't have fire coming out of your eyes and a sword coming out of your mouth, okay? We have a job to do, and that is to love a very depraved, ungodly world. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved, Inslee. <sighs> that hurts to say that he gave his only begotten son. So, hey, praise God for your zeal. Praise God for my passion. Praise God for that thing that's like, enough is stinking enough. Praise God for those Canadian truck drivers. Yeah. I didn't know Canada had it in them. You know, I'll tell you, I was, I was with Kay, uh, uh, Katie Souza a year ago, and the Lord spoke to me and said that he was going to release a lion-like move of God in Canada. That was a year ago. And I believe that what we're seeing in the natural is the beginning of what the Lord wants to birth in the church in Canada. A lion-like move of God. That there would be just a roar that gets released from the church, from the body of Christ. And isn't it interesting that the Lord is using truck drivers? What does that remind you of? It reminds me of a rabbi that chose fishermen, tax collectors, and some militant, violent man that loved to be a part of riots and said, come, come and follow me. It's believed that Simon the Zealot became quite an influential um, missionary throughout Egypt. There are writings of where he traveled. There are little to no writings as to what Simon the Zealot actually did within these countries. How did Simon die? It's believed um, that Simon was martyred. There's a, uh, here's a, a painting of his execution. And it's believed that he was martyred by being cut in half with a saw. You can see the large uh, Colosseum here. You can see the large saw where they would go up and down. And you can see that the artist within, uh, that painted this painting has Simon up in a cloud lifting his hand, praising God, uh, removed from his, from his execution. And you and I get to follow Jesus. Where are you going to follow him? Where is he going to take you? Some of you have an idea, don't you? Some of you, you have an idea of where he's taking you. And some of you, you don't have any idea. But, but, but how many of you, it's just your desire. You are, you are willing. You are, you're ready. You're, a, you're, you're ready to just drop everything to follow Jesus wherever, wherever he takes you. How many of you, it's like you just got your sails up and you're just waiting for the wind. You're just ready for the wind of his spirit. How many of you, you're, you're just, you're saying, Father, my sails are out. Come and blow into my sail. Come and take me. Come and take my family. Take us wherever you want to go. 
We give our lives to your kingdom purposes. We give your li- our lives to your ways. How many of you are being inspired by these guys who laid it all down to be sent ones, to be apostles? You guys, I believe that we are in an apostolic era. And what do I mean by that? I believe that we are coming into a restoration of the office of the apostle where it looks radically different than previous eras where an apostle was one with a cool title and cool things and cool style to being an apostolic generation just like the first century apostolic generation in Antioch and Jerusalem. What are you talking about, Pastor Darren? Well, these days, you know apostles because you know all about them. You know all about them. You can read their books. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. But what's the problem with this series? What's the problem with this series? We know their names. But with a lot of these guys, we don't know anything about them except that they follow Jesus. They were with him all the time. He breathed on them as we studied this morning in the service that they were persecuted, that they went to nations, they did supernatural exploits. Well, what were they? We hardly know anything about these guys except for they went to Egypt, they went to China, they went to India, they went all throughout Europe, they went to uh, places like Moldova, they went to places like Turkey, they went to places like Russia, they, they, they went everywhere that they could, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who were they? I don't know. We know their name. It was one of the twelve. Did you hear what? One of the twelve was in town. He raised so-and-so from the... What do we know about them? Nothing. It's been... It's, they, they don't even update their blog. They don't even have a YouTube channel. But guess what? We know their name. They were an apostolic generation where it wasn't about declaring even what they were up to. They were working underground. In a time where bringing the gospel was illegal, in a time where it would get you killed. And all of these 12 that we know, with the exception of Judas, who killed himself. By the way, he's going to get his own week. That'll be interesting. Um, And John the Beloved, where we don't really have a firm record of his death. All of the others gave their lives and counted Counted it a blessing. Even these ones that were, the Jews believed that if you were hung from a tree, you were cursed. And they counted it an honor to be considered cursed. Let's stand. Would you just put your hand on the person next, next to you? Father, would you just fill each and every person here? Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them afresh. Fill them with a fresh fire for signs, wonders, and miracles. Fill them with a fresh fire for res- with that resurrection power. It, isn't it incredible to think that there are dead raisers in this room right now? It blows my mind to think that there are dead raisers in this room right now. The same spirit that raised, wow. The same spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells abides inside of you. Just pray for the person next to you. Just say, Lord, blow, blow their mind. Blow their mind with what you're about to do. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Signs, wonders, miracles, deliverance, 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 deliverance. The light of heaven, the life, life of heaven, the faith of God. The faith of God right now. Fill, fill, fill. Hey, 
Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Some of you, you need to move. Even in the room, you need to get out from your chair. You need to move. and Go lay your fat hand on someone and just say, I loose the Holy Spirit right now. Some of you need to find someone right now. You say, I want what you got. Pray for me right now. Pray for me right now. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Blow, 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 blow through this room, Spirit of God. Blow through this room. <laughs> if you don't know what to say, just say, more, Lord, more. More, 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 until he can't take any more. Give me more, Lord, more of you. Fill, 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 fill with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> take it, take it. If you don't know what to say, just say fire! The fire of God! Right now, right now, right now, right now, take it! Burn, 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 burn. Come and burn, Holy Spirit. Come and burn. Come and rest on us like you rested on Mount Sinai. Come and rest on us like you rested on that burning bush. Come and rest on us like you rested on the 120. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Burn in us. Burn through us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come up here. Come on. 
Keep singing, keep worshiping, keep pressing in. Fire, fall down, fire, fall down. Bless you guys, awesome. Will you guys just take hands? Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. You're stirring a fire. You're stirring a fire. You're stirring a fire. You're stirring up a fire inside of Moses. You're stirring. You're stirring a fire inside of Joan. You're stirring. You're stirring a fire. The 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 passionate fire of God. Yeah, the passionate fire of God. The passionate fire of God. Yes, Lord, the passionate fire of God that breaks chains, that breaks chains, that breaks strongholds, that reveals the Christ, that reveals the resurrection power of the Christ. Yes, God, you're raising up, you're raising up a man of fire, a man of wonders. Moses, you are a man of wonders. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because He has anointed you. Yes, to bring forth the good news of this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Moses, 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 I know your name. Moses, I know your name. Moses, I know your name. Moses, it is I who define you. It is I who sets your ceiling. It is I. It is I that declares what is possible in and through you. Father, I thank you for who Moses is. I thank you, Father, for his DNA and his spiritual lineage, O oh God. I thank you, Father, that he has honored his mother and his father. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are opening wide. You are opening wide that generational um, uh, inheritance into Moses' life. Father, I thank you for this woman of the Spirit. I thank you for this woman of the breath of God in the winds of God. This woman that is caught up in the winds of God, that is caught up in the breath of God. Joan, you're a woman of the Spirit. You're a woman of the Spirit who walks in the Spirit, who flies and travels in the Spirit. A woman who sees in the Spirit. A woman who prays in the Spirit. A woman who declares the things of God in the Spirit. A woman who sings in the Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the glory of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord that is coming into their home in this time and in this day. I even see manifestations of glory that are going to begin occurring. I even see supernatural manifestation. Hey! Of the glory of God. I see the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God pouring forth, pouring from your hearts. And I've heard, I've, I've, I've heard your prayers. Lord, use us to do more. And I just hear the Lord saying, I'm going to honor your prayer. You've been wondering what. <laughs> You've been wondering how. But I just see the Lord is going to fill you up with His wisdom, His revelation, His glory, and His power. And it's, and it's, and it's practical, but it's very, very spiritual. And it's not just sending things to certain places. You're going to go. Your children are going to go. You're going to preach the gospel and signs and wonders are going to follow. And people are going to say the spirit of God is upon this family. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. The gal that's new here tonight, can you, can you, would you come? We would just like to bless you. And the guy that's standing next to you, I don't think we've met yet. I've seen you before. Can you come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Just put up your hands. Yeah, just, I saw the spirit of the Lord all, all over you as you were back there. Yeah, you want more. You're hungry for the things of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord just says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. <laughs> Get her, Lord. 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 I said, more, God. More, Lord. More, more, more. More, more, more. Fill her. Fill her. Fill her. Ricky, get her. Get her, Ricky. More, 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 more. I hear the Lord say, 
get ready to rock and roll. Get ready to rock and roll. Get ready to rumble. The Lord says, I'm going to shake you. I'm going to fill you. I'm going to overflow through you. Say more, Lord. Here, bro, come over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I just see the grace of God all over you. I see the grace of God all over you. I just see, I see the presence of His peace. I see the shalom of the Lord all over you. I bless you. I call you blessed of the Lord. I call you blessed of the Lord. I call you blessed of the Lord. Father, I pray for a fresh infilling tonight. A fresh touch tonight in Jesus' name. A fresh infilling. Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom.